Welcome and thank you for attending this evening's meeting of the Westerville City Schools Board of Education. We're delighted to have all of you. The agenda will be displayed on the screens in the front of the room for you to follow along. Um, there will be two opportunities this evening to address the board. The first being agenda item 6.1. The first set of public comments is relative to agenda item 7.1 through 11.1. Please state the agenda items you are referencing at the beginning of your comments. The second opportunity is agenda item 12.1. There is a sign-up sheet located on the table in the back of the room. And each speaker will have five minutes to address the board. And a timer will be shown on the screen. And with that, Ms. Marshall, will you please call the roll? Mr. Bell? Present. Dr. Nestebaker? Here. Ms. Cotter? Here. Mr. Velarde? Here. Mrs. Davidson? Here. Will you please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, up first this evening, uh, district highlights and recognitions, and that it takes us to our A-plus awards, and I'm going to hand it over to Mr. Pilardo. Thank you, President Davidson. We are very excited any time we get to recognize the superlative work that is done throughout our district. I tried to make my way around in the reception room to say to each award winner, um, this is really a big deal N not because we are giving this award but because this award was nominated from your co-workers your friends those that see you in action all the time and yet they still thought <laughs> you were exemplary <laughs> that's not easy to do is it so this a plus award goes to excellent work above and beyond the excellent work that all of us up here know happens in our district day in and day out so in just a second i'm going to go to the podium i'm going to ask my fellow board members with dr kellogg and miss marshall to stand in front here uh, I'll call each one up one at a time. You will, the nominator will read uh, the nomination and uh, then the, the, the award winner will come forward and receive uh, a tremendous award. And are, are these also, these awards were, why don't you say, just so I, I make sure, this is, this is really interesting piece right here. Listen to this. So several years ago, we commissioned some students in the engineering program at North to design an award for this event. And uh, these are homegrown. These are made by students in our, our, at the shop at Westville North. So they are homegrown. And actually, it looks like they've done a design improvement from what we saw before. So they are, they're already thinking about improving, which is the kind of learners we want. So um, thank you to those students and to the folks at North for putting it together. So you're getting something. You like the homemade Mother's Day card better than the store-bought <laughs> homemade card, right? So that's what we got here tonight. Thank you, Dr. Kellogg. I, I knew that that would be important for you to know. Okay, let's uh, go up front. Again, my role here is I will just call up uh, the nominator and uh, the nominee, the, the award winner, um, and then the uh, nominator will read through a part of the nomination. So from Anhurst Elementary School, uh, Trey Reeves, would you please come forward? And Sarah Flagler, will you come forward as well, the award winner? You can applaud now if you want. <laughs> Come with me to the ESL classroom where you will find students who are linguistically and culturally diverse. In that same classroom, you will find the most delightful and dedicated teacher. Sarah Flagler works hard every day meeting the language needs of students who speak Arabic, Akan, Spanish, Nepali, Kenyawanda, and even more. Sarah goes above and beyond planning multicultural events at her and her school and making every parent and child feel special. Now come with me 
to the monthly ESL parent meetings where you will find Sarah giving her time and energy after school, providing childcare so that our parents can participate fully in their child's education. Month after month, year after year, Sarah serves. Sarah's good instruction overcomes language barriers to build academic content knowledge and instill confidence in her students. She is definitely an A-plus educator. From uh, Blendon and Heritage Middle Schools, uh, Amy Levine will come up and read the nomination to award winner Joshua Ice. I'm here tonight to introduce Mr. Joshua Ice, our choral director at Blendon and also at Hawthorne. Josh began at this position three years ago, knowing it was not full time, but his efforts even then were to create a place for all kids to learn to sing. He did his undergraduate work at the University of Akron with a BA in music, graduating in 2011, and received his teacher training at Capital University, graduating in 2015. He's a fifth year teacher and also works as a piano and voice instructor and accompanist and has directed church music groups. In his short time at Blendon, his choir has taken grand champion in the middle school choir division at King, the Kings Island Music Showcase Festival competition three years in a row since they started going in 2017. He has also been active in co-directing our drama productions, leading the cast of Susical last year. He is finally this year a full-time employee. He is engaging with the students, requires them to learn proper voice techniques and solfege, and works with small groups before school or on his planning time so that students are prepared and confident in their performances. He is not only an A-plus teacher, but a warm, kind adult that wants the best for every student. Uh, from Central High School, uh, Missy Ewing to come forward to present to Lauren Perry. <laughs> Good evening. We have the pleasure of having Adriana Lyons, who insisted on coming here tonight with us to present. My name is Missy Ewing, and I'm Transition Coordinator at Central. It is my pleasure to introduce my nominee, Lauren Perry, an intervention specialist teaching a specialized learning classroom for students with intellectual disabilities at Central. When I wrote up Lauren's nomination, I used a Maya Angelou quote to frame my thoughts. I've learned that people will forget what you said, People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. I spoke of Lauren's involvement, running with team heart and soul, taking her own time to present a diploma 30 miles from Westerville, wow. working with our football coach to develop an inclusive football camp for Westerville students, planning amazing outings for her kids, including free trainer-led workout sessions at a local gym. I tried to capture for this committee some high points in what I see her do every day for our kids and families. But as I speak here today, I know that none of these events are what make her teaching outstanding. The reason her students will never forget how she made them feel is because of the ordinary. The ordinary way she handles situations no one could anticipate, and there are a lot of them. <laughs> The ordinary way, she crafts a lesson that will reach all of our exceptional learners. 
The ordinary ease with which she can keep her cool and step into a situation and refocus our kids right back to task. She is able to hold her students to a very high standard that others don't think they are capable to reach, and then they reach it. Maslow said, the sacred is in the ordinary, and I believe this to be true. It is because of the ordinary that I know that Lauren's kids will never forget how she made them feel. To uh, represent uh, the, our district, I'm going to call up uh, Shelly Bailey to present to Tim Gamble. It is our great pleasure to present our coworker Timothy Gamble with the District A Plus Award. Tim has been an integral part of the Information Technology Department since he began with the district in 2017. He has an incredible work ethic and takes much pride and joy in serving our staff and students to the best of his ability. Tim is always available to lend advice and guidance to his coworkers and is always quick to come up with a solution or a workaround if a solution is not readily available, while always having a pleasant and helpful attitude. He volunteers to lead large projects and often spends his personal time researching the best way to accomplish tasks. This past summer, he took on the imaging and software builds of over 300 middle and high school pathway laptops. This is a tremendous task for one person, but Tim organized a plan to efficiently execute the project to completion before school was back in session so students would have working laptops with the latest software. Tim's ambition and ability to go above and beyond for students, staff, coworkers, and the district make him the perfect recipient for this A-plus award. I asked him if he would stay for the rest of the meeting. I have some computer problems. I was going to ask him to stay. <laughs> That's awesome. From uh, Faust Elementary School, uh, call up Molly Frizzell to present to Juari Haji. Miss Haji or Miss JJ, as the kids call her, truly puts the special in special education. I think the reason she is wonderful at her job is because she has so much respect for it and her students. She understands it takes so much more than teaching content to get students to reach their full potential. Miss JJ is an advocate for her students every day in every way. She collaborates with their teachers, making sure their accommodations are met. This takes educating teachers, staff, and students about disabilities and how to integrate all children in classrooms. Maybe my favorite quality of Miss JJ's is that she is a constant ally for parents, always reminding them their child has a bright future and is so much more than the sum of his or her deficits. This past summer, Miss JJ could have been home enjoying her new baby boy. Instead, she missed her students and came up with a great idea to keep them from falling behind during summer break. For six weeks, Miss JJ ran a book club at the library. Every Wednesday, for two hours, a group of kids in need of tutoring were given her services free of charge. They were able to do it in a group setting with their friends from school, 
and checked out books to read and bring back the next week. They didn't see it as an intervention group. It was a fun group they referred to as the book club. At the end of the six weeks, Miss JJ was so pleased with their progress and positive attitudes that she treated the kids to a pizza party in Uptown. Some of the parents attended and all agreed we had never seen such generosity from a teacher. Our children had something in common. They were struggling readers and Miss JJ had created something to make them look forward to reading this summer. Truly a priceless gift it was she had given us. Miss JJ, the services you provide for our school and families are greatly appreciated. Our community benefits from our children becoming successful and this is because you go the extra mile. You make our children feel safe and heard from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you for all that you do. Uh, from Genoa Middle School, I'm going to call up uh, several people. <laughs> Shannon McCreary, Lisa Lunn, Carla Gilbert, Jamie Yeater, or Yeater, to present to Eric Hugavin. Hugavin. Yeah, I was this close. <laughs> a special um, little boutonniere, so. Okay. Our sixth grade team, Team Journey, nominated Eric Kugavine because he embodies all of the criteria for the Westerville City Schools a Award. He goes above and beyond in support of students. He spends his lunch period working with students, gives up his planning to work with students, and makes videos for students to gain a better understanding of content. Within Team Journey, Eric has taken on several roles and come up with many ideas to connect home to school. Eric is innovative as he always knows the latest and greatest technology tools to use with students. As an intervention specialist, Eric works most closely with a targeted group of students, but his efforts and ideas benefit the entire team. In fact, <laughs> when our team met during the summer, Eric said, and I quote, I plan to work with all the students on our team, not just the ones on the caseload. That statement shows how much he cares about the well-being of all our students on our team. He is the first to sign up to help with the, any event at school. In fact, he even volunteered a stint in the dunk machine a few weeks ago, and that's not his first time. <laughs> Eric's energy and enthusiasm are contagious. He's an inspiration to his co-workers and a role model to all of our students. Genoa's team journey and the entire building is very lucky to have Mr. Hugavine. Congratulations. And from McVeigh Elementary School, uh, Jason Fullen to present to Heather Smalley. It is my pleasure to recognize Heather Smalley, McVeigh Elementary's instructional coach, as a Westerville City Schools A Plus Award recipient. I've had the honor to work with Heather these last two school years, and in that time, I have seen Heather exemplify innovation prioritize staff and student-centered support, and display a commitment to instructional excellence. Heather is an integral part of our staff. Her leadership in implementing new programs for students, her constant support of staff members, and her organization of events for our families have greatly enhanced the McVeigh Elementary experience. McVeigh staff members shared these sentiments about working with Heather. Heather is amazing at manipulating data and helping us target instruction. She is always willing to find resources and provide hands-on support. Heather is a phenomenal instructional coach who has a wealth of academic information. 
Heather is the best coach I've ever had. She will help create and implement lessons and programs, helps with scheduling and planning, comes up with behavior planned options, and is an all-around superstar. Indeed, Heather Smalley is a superstar, and we are so grateful that she shines so brightly every day for the staff and students of McVeigh Elementary. Thank you. From uh, Westerville North High School, Wes Illifritz, come up to present to Ashley Young. Uh, good evening, Dr. Kellogg, Mrs. Marshall, and members of the board. Congratulations to our award winners uh, this evening. We are honored to be here to congratulate Westerville North teacher Ashley Young and her well-deserved A-plus award. Uh, one of the main tenets of our district's A-plus award selection process is that a candidate has a willingness to go above and beyond normal expectations in support of students. At Westerville North, we are blessed with many such individuals, namely our nominee with us this evening. Ashley is a math teacher, serves as co-advisor of the Student Council, and has served on numerous occasions as an event worker for Westerville North Athletics. In all of these roles, Ashley displays a high level of servant leadership, showing a genuine care for the well-being and growth of others. Her, her students speak highly of her as a math instructor in the classroom, and members of student council greatly enjoy her leadership when planning and implementing homecoming each fall at North. While many of Ashley's students have a past history of struggling with math, they begin to thrive under her instruction and care. It is a true testament every May at the Celeste Center as numerous seniors annually choose Ashley to present them with their diploma. Whenever there is a need, Ashley looks at how she can help fill it. When a young person is struggling, Ashley takes a genuine approach towards assisting whether she knows the student or not. Her willingness to go ab above and beyond normal expectations in support of students makes her an exceptional example of what an A-plus employee and teacher looks like. We are proud to call her a warrior, and while we, were, we will miss her at many basketball games this winter, we congratulate her on the upcoming addition to her family. We have no doubt she will be an A-plus mom as well. She smiled because I said, I'm just sensing twins. I didn't know what that was. <laughs> Sorry. From uh, Transportation Department, uh, Sarah Burka to come up and to present to Rachel Gummer. Good evening. Um, good evening, Dr. Tomball, Ms. Mar Ms. Marshall, um, President Davidson, and members of the board. It is my pleasure to present Rachel Gummer um, from bus number 85. Uh, Rachel started driving route, I guess they're route numbers maybe, sorry, um, bus 85 last year. Um, this route typically gets a lot of turnover um, with drivers. Oftentimes, it's not uncommon to have several drivers within one year. Um, but Rachel chose to keep this route into this year in order to provide this group of kids with the much needed consistency of having the same driver from year to year. This consistency not only helped the kids with their ride to and from school, but it also helped to make the opening weeks of school smooth because the students' day started and ended with a familiar person for whom they felt safe and knew them and their families. 
Um, Rachel goes above and beyond her job description, not just by safely driving these youngsters to and from school every day, but she often parks her bus in the morning and actually comes inside and has breakfast with them. Um, she makes her way around to get to know them and build relationships with them. Um, and, and truly, that makes a huge difference in um, helping them transition to and from school. Her commitment to students is evidence, and she is well deserving of an A plus award. And from uh, Walnut Springs Middle School, I'd like to have Kayla Valera come up to present to Tammy Jones. Uh, Tammy is an instructional aide at Walnut Springs um, in the ED program, Specialized Learning Classroom. She's been there for 11 years. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with her for the last five. Um, she deserves to be recognized for her outstanding service to our students, whether she is helping a student complete an assignment or talking them through a difficult life situation. Tammy displays character, trust, and positivity on a daily basis. Her resilience and dedication do not go unnoticed in our building. Tammy is truly an A-plus educator. Just a quick, a quick summary. My fellow board members and I authentically know that it is uh, really more than a privilege that we get to do what we get to do. Um, sometimes make hard decisions, sometimes make unpopular decisions, but we recognize uh, we are very honored to do this. But beyond that, I would like you to focus on what you heard tonight. What you heard tonight were teachers going above and beyond in special ed classes. What you heard tonight was a bus driver who kept a route that apparently nobody else. <clears throat> and she stayed to make them have some consistency. What you heard tonight were educators, staff members, who go in the definition of the A-plus award above and beyond. Helping students and fellow staff members succeed more than they thought they could. Please understand, you got this A-plus award because you deserved it and you earned it but we know you got this award because you value people that you work with. So from us, the board, Dr. Kellogg, it's Dr. Kellogg, <laughs> and Ms. Marshall, we want to thank you for making this district, we believe, the premier district in Central Ohio, and we would want to be no place else. So please give yourselves and everyone one more round of applause.
You are free to go unless you want to stay for the rest of the board meeting. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. Yes, she did. She did. You ready? Okay. Um, up next, 4.1, approve the meet, I'm sorry, 4.1, approve the minutes of the regular board meeting held Monday, October 14, 2019. May I have a motion? So moved. One second. Any comments, corrections? Ms. Marshall? Mr. Bell? Yes. Ms. Cotter? Yes. Dr. Nestebaker? Yes. Mr. Villarda? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. We do not have any reports this evening. We also do not have any public comments this evening right now, which takes us to financials 7.1 resolution to approve the purchase in accordance with ORC 5705.41 and board policy 6320. May I have a motion? So seconded. And Ms. Marshall? Uh, yes, yeah, so this is the then and now purchase orders that, um, uh, sorry, let me get it out here so you know what I'm talking about. Um, so then and now purchase order, this is where we had a um, invoice that was dated prior to the purchase order date. This was due to a carryover from crossing over fiscal years. Um, July 1st is the beginning of our fiscal year. We had a staff member that normally handles these things at the building that was out, and so we didn't get a purchase order in place. The budget was available, so I'd ask the board to approve this. 
for payment. Any questions or comments? Nope. Ms. Marshall? Ms. Carter? Yes. Mr. Velarde? Yes. Mr. Bell? Yes. Dr. Nastbaker? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. 7.2, approve the financial report and investments for September 2019. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Uh, yes, President Davidson, members of the board, this month we're going over the September 30th month end. Um, I'd like to remind everybody that this is the third month of the fiscal year, uh, so September 30th. The general fund year-to-date receipts were about $75 million. Year-to-date expenditures were about $47.7 million. And the unencumbered fund balance is $140 million. Uh, for all funds, year-to-date receipts were $92 million. Year-to-date expenditures were $61.8 million. And unencumbered fund balance of $198 million. And again, it's um, September 30th, which is the third balances are a little high because of the timing of the year and the way our collections come in with property tax revenue and all that. Any questions? That's a good point. Hearing none. Ms. Cotter? Yes. Mr. Bell? Yes. Dr. Nestor Baker? Yes. Mr. Velarde? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Um, personnel consent agenda 8.1 through 8.5 may have a motion. So moved. Second. And Dr. Hopkins is with us. Good evening, President Davidson, members of the board, <coughs> Dr. Kellogg. I'd like to present for your consideration the personnel consent agenda. We have a relatively light agenda tonight. There are eight resignations from various classified and classified substitute positions, with three of those eight resignations actually moving to con contracted positions with the district. We have the employment of 12 individuals to a number of classified and classified subpositions. And finally, in the licensed employment <laughs> section, we have the employment of a number of people to various supplemental and classified people activities program positions. Happy to answer any questions you may have at this time. Hearing none. Dr. Nastabaker? Yes. Ms. Cotter? Yes. Mr. Bell? Yes. Mr. Velarde? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Um, old business this evening. Would it be okay if we took this all as one motion? Mm -hmm. Okay. 9.1 through 9.4. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any comments here? Okay. Mr. Velarde? Yes. Mr. Bell? Yes. Dr. Nestebaker? Yes. Ms. Cotter? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. We do not have any new business this evening. Uh, standing business donations, 11.1. .1. May I have a motion? So moved. Seconded. <laughs> any comments here? It goes without saying, so we need to say it. Um, we are tremendously grateful for all of these gifts, um, people just going, again, above and beyond. So please know that we are very thankful for these gifts. Thank you, Rick. I, just one quick comment. We heard tonight um, a little bit how much or how giving our, our staff members are, and this is just another way. As I look through this list, it's interesting to see how many staff members are contributing financially also to our district. So thank you very much. Dr. Nestor Baker? Yes. Mr. Velarde? Yes. Mr. Bell? Yes. Ms. Cotter? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. That takes us to public comments, and we have two speakers this evening. The first speaker is Colleen Moidu. Hello? Can you hear me? Do I have to like bend down? <laughs> okay. Push down, on the, push down on the far side. There we go. Okay. Is that, is that good? Okay. <clears throat> Hi. How are you? <laughs> um, do I have to introduce my, say my name? Sure. Colleen Moidu. Um, I'm a parent here in the district and um, just having the opportunity to sit in the audience tonight and hear about all of the fantastic um, teachers we have in the district, I was struck by something. Um, and I was kind of making some notes of some different words I heard. <laughs> words that were absent were report cards, grades, things like that. Words that I was hearing were 
advocate, collaborate, um, all of our children, inclusion, um, an individual kept coming up over and over and over again. And just thinking about with a district of 15,000 plus students, how many individuals <laughs> that is that this district is responsible for nurturing and educating um, and just what, what a big job that is and then how impactful the people in this room and all of the teachers and staff we have, principals, administrators, are to those young lives. Um, and, and my own three children, um, personally right now, one of my children is, is struggling in school. And it is, we're learning because of the way his brain works. Mm. <laughs> and sorry, I might get a little emotional. Um, and it's his teacher, not me, that, that helped us identify this. And um, I'm just really thankful that we have staff that are able to identify those needs, have the resources to help support. We had a meeting with, I think there were probably six or seven people in the room to help us look at how he's been doing, what we need to do next. And so that, that's just something I value. I value a lot and I'm thankful to all of you for making sure that that happens. And I know that part of that is possible um, through funding that the district gets from our community. Um, and for that reason, um, you know, so that we have safe schools for our kids, so that our kids have adequate spaces to learn in, um, so that they have the resources and support that they need to be successful. Um, I, as a parent, am going to be voting yes on issue eight and encouraging the community to do to do the same because this this is our future these kids are our future these are these little little human beings that are going to be sitting in your seats our seats one of these days um, and so that investment is is so valuable i thank you all for taking the time to put together um, such a comprehensive thoughtful plan being so responsible um, and i you know i fully support it um, and uh, our, our students and our schools are at the heart of our community. Um, what's good for our schools is good for our community. So, yes on eight. <laughs> Thank you. Um, up next, we have Carl Asmus. Welcome. I have a, a, a few questions regarding some of the charts and some of the tables that were sent to us, you know, in preparation of these tax increase request. Perhaps you can uh, remind me, why did the enrollments during the years from 2008 to 2011 rise relatively more than they did before? Um, right now, this is a time for public comments. You can ask us all kinds of questions. Yeah. I Right now, you can ask us all kinds of questions, but typically we do not answer questions right now. Um, you, just, you just take the, uh, the questions and, and sometime in the future I will get it. Well, answers. sometimes we don't know the answer right then. So if we can answer them after, absolutely we would. So you go ahead and ask, answer, or ask your questions and we'll see what we can do. If not, someone will get back to you. Well, I would like to know why there was the, this somewhat rapid increase for those years, and then the three following years, enrollments dropped. Did that have anything to do with accepting students from the Columbus School District? Next, you have uh, forecast, forecasted increases in enrollments from uh, 2000. 20 up to 2028. Uh, I, I looked at the changes from this table, and I assume is fiscal year 2020 through fiscal year 2029, and I noticed that the changes, although always positive, fluctuate, which seems to me to be a little somewhat strange. When, uh, when considering forecasts, I'm not used to seeing those kinds of ups and downs, uh, even if uh, everything is increasing. So, uh, what I'm, so, so what I'm concerned about, 
what is the model that you use to make these forecasts of the future? I assume that spa they, some of them are based on actual data, like how many people you expect are going to graduate and how many you expect are going to come into the system. Anyway, I noticed, for example, the uh, upcoming years increases 129, 192, 156, but later on, later into the 2020s, from 154 down to 116, 78, 118. I, I'm, I'm just surprised to see these sorts of things. Finally, regarding district finances, I notice a relatively nice increase in the unreserved balance from 2012 up to the current year and presumably into 2020. Why such an increase and why, why not use some of that instead of <coughs> increased tax receipts? Are those all of your questions, sir? Thank you very much. Who would like to go first? Anybody? About what? Does anyone want to answer? I can turn. I, on. Yep, that's I right. can touch on the enrollment mm -hmm. piece. Um, our, uh, our enrollment um, numbers that you're looking at come from a uh, agency that um, we uh, connected to through Ohio School Facilities Commission. It's a requirement for Ohio Schools Facilities Commission to do uh, um, enrollment forecasts. There's basically two models. One is a live cohort model, percentage of students who go from grade one to grade two to grade three, four. The other one is a live birth model. Um, that, that particular model um, just projects our enrollment increase over time. And it's not uncommon to have fluctuations year in, year out. In fact, any, any projection is going to have fluctuations year in and year out. Just like think of the stock market, right? Percentage-wise, annually, it's not going to be the same increase year after year after year. So it's the same function there. If you look, you'll notice that our, our, in general, we increase by about 1% a year. So it's a slow growth, but 1% of 15,000 15, 15, kids is 1,500, uh, 150 kids per year times 10 years is 1,500 kids. So our enrollment projections come from that group, uh, FutureThink. Um, so we have those numbers. Um, you said 2008 through 2011. I, I thought I heard you say increase, but I think you meant decrease. Increase. I thought I heard you say increase enrollment 2008 through 2011. 2011, yes, there's a, a, a noticeably higher rate of increase than in other years. You sure that's not the, is that right after the, the failure? It was failure. And then from 2011 down to 2014, there was a drop in the enrollment. Right. So there was an enrollment drop at one point generally associated with failure of a levy in 2011 um, that came back with the, the emergency levy in 2012. Uh, so, yes, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. yes. Students because leaving the district because of services that weren't, weren't able to provide that time. So enrollment increases come from our, um, we've actually done it three different ways, three different models, and all the models are about the same parallel in terms of increase. Um, if you want more information on the model or want to work through the whole thing, Scott Dorn, who's there in the back, blue suit with his hand raised, he can give you page by page the, the projection, projections that we use. So those do come from a database, um, reliable database we've used year in and year out. Okay? Hope that helps. Yes, and to your question about the district finances, the um, fund balance has grown over the years due to the significant cuts that the district made back in 2011-12 after the levy failure that the district saw um, and the district's concerted effort to extend the amount of time before we have to come back to voters again for additional taxes um, at the time. When we last passed new money in 2012, we were anticipating to come back to voters in three years. We've been able to stretch that to what will be nine years with deficit spending. And that's because of the reserve balance that we have that we've been able to do that. So during this, this period of uh, 2012 through the current period, you reduced expenditures relative to the revenues? And that's why the uh, unreserved balance is growing? Uh-huh. 
Oh, very good. But you cannot continue that cutting of expenditures any further? Like to. There, there was one other part of your enrollment question I wanted to address. You mentioned students coming in from, the Colum from Columbus. I, I, I thought I had heard that that had been done at one time. No, that's... No, that, that might be one of the greatest myths of Westerville City Schools, is that we took students from Columbus. It's actually the reverse. Uh -huh. So uh, any student, any home in our school, all the students in our district alive in West, uh, reside in Westerville City Schools. They reside in Westerville City Schools property and pay Westerville City Schools property tax. Portions mostly of Blendon Township were annexed by the City of Columbus. Not, not Columbus City Schools. So portions of Blendon Township, if you look at a map of Blendon Township, it looks like somebody took bites out of it. There's parts that aren't even connected. That's a function of the City of Columbus annexing portions of those townships, but, this, but Columbus City Schools not paralleling that annexation. So Columbus City took the property for the income tax, but Columbus City Schools left the property and they remained Westerville City Schools students, Westerville City Schools property tax. Um, you may not know, but Westerville City Schools actually used to be larger. Sharon Township used to be Westerville City Schools before it was annexed by City of Columbus and Columbus City Schools. And at that point, in the late 70s, early 80s, the district lost all those students. So one of the myths. Um, that information regarding win-win is on our website with accurate information as to what it is and, and how, how it affected us. But all the students within our boundary live in Westerville City Schools City uh, District and pay Westerville City, not the students, but the properties pay Westerville City Schools property tax, always have and always will. Okay. Well, I ask that question because I'm in a little trouble for some reason. I have to do you know, school taxes and they owe Westerville, everything else, City of Columbus. Bingo. You're, you're right in the area I just talked about. <coughs> yeah, I, you, you and Mr. Dorn should talk because he's your neighbor. <laughs> Yeah. Mr. Dorn, back there's your neighbor. You guys can share stories about that. He's in the exact same spot. Yeah, that's exactly what that was. You are a walking example of what we're talking about. Right. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, that takes us to board comments. Anybody have any comments this evening? Um, just one more congratulations to our award winners this evening. Thank you all for staying. <laughs> Sorry. 4.1, the board will meet in regular session on Monday, November 18th, 2019, and Monday, December 9th, 2019 at 6 p.m. here at the Early Learning Center. And with that, we are going to go into executive session to discuss employment and compensation of public employees. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. Right. And we will adjourn after our executive session. We have to vote. We have to vote on this, though. Yeah. Oh. Ms. Cotter? Yes. She said Mr. Bell? First. Yes. Dr. Nesterbaker? Yes. Mr. Velarda? Yes. <laughs> Mrs. Davidson. Yes. It is 6.56. Okay. Every crowd. I don't know if my office is locked or not.